Welcome to the Creative Homeschool Podcast. In this podcast, I'm coming at you to deliver you a weekly dash of creativity to make your homeschool exciting for your kids, but for you too. We're going to explore all of the different ways to creatively homeschool. Games, field trips, unit studies, writing activities, kid businesses, art, and more. I'm your host, Julie Soule, longtime homeschool mom, shenanigan enthusiast, espresso drinker, and founder and co-owner of Soul Sparklets Art. I've helped thousands add creativity and joy to their homeschool, and I'm ready to help you too. Ready to get started? Let's go. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Creative Homeschool. I'm sitting here recording this, and you might hear a really weird noise in the background. And if you do, that is actually my pet hamster who was named Phantom by my kids. And he is a long haired hamster. So he kind of looks like a pom pom with legs instead of a more traditional hamster. The reason this is relevant is because I wanted to talk about how do you find your child's passion? I frankly didn't realize that hamsters were a passion of my kids until they suddenly were. Passions can do a lot of things for a kid the main one, it can increase their confidence. And in particular, I have a younger child who can struggle with reading, but you get her a hamster book and suddenly she's reading words that I didn't know that she could. But if your child responds, I don't know what's out there. When you ask them what they'd like to learn, then this episode is for you. I want to talk about a really popular way to ignite a child's passion or to help them discover it, which is the art of strewing. But I also want to go through some other ideas for bring your child's passion that I've used, I've seen others use, and not every shoe is the perfect fit. So I love giving you lots of options with the hope that one of these will kind of ignite yours and will be a good fit for you. So the first thing I want to talk about is strewing, S-T-R-E-W-I-N-G, although I have seen it spelled in a couple of different ways now, but it is basically the art of putting things everywhere so that your child will stumble upon it. So the idea here is that you just happen to leave out a book, you can leave out a puzzle, a science kit, and your child will just be do to do come down the stairs, bought the book, and suddenly be interested. But that's not necessarily how it can work. So there are a lot of times where you can set it up and kids are going to find that book, start reading, and there's sometimes that they just walk by what you have so helpfully placed on the couch, on the table, in the middle of the floor, because you would hope that a child would find it if it was in the middle of the floor, and they don't. So here's some options when you're talking about strewing. The first is to change it up and know your kids. A book might work really, really well for an older child. So books are a really great one for strewing. And when you're strewing books, the object isn't to leave 10 books at once or 10 topics at once. The object here is to do one thing at a time. So maybe this week on a Tuesday, I'm going to leave a couple books about airplanes around because I think maybe my child might want to go over to, here we have an air zoo, an air and science museum. Maybe they want to go there and I want to kind of see if they want to spend some extra time there. So I'm going to leave a couple of books about airplanes lying around and see what happens. The other idea is to do a puzzle. And this doesn't have to be a jigsaw, but this can be logic puzzles. This can be mazes about that topic. There's some really incredible books out there that are themed. One in particular, when we wanted to do ancient Egypt, is there is a maze puzzle book. So as you solve the mazes, it gives you a clue as to where to start your journey in the next maze. And it's all on ancient Egypt. So puzzles doesn't have to be a jigsaw. Other things are science and activity kits. Those kits that you get from family members, those kits that you pick up when you just happen to notice a good sale, those kinds of things. You could leave out a toy, for example, a yo-yo. Have kids just stumble upon a yo-yo and start asking questions. What is this? And then you explain, you know, you can do tricks with this. Would you like to learn how? 
So strewing is the art of leaving these objects around the house, not to overwhelm the child. So remember, you're not looking at lots of different things at once. You're looking at one particular topic and you're looking to just see if it sparks any interest. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't, but that's what you're looking for. Another option for discovering a child's passion is those subscription boxes. So one of the things that I loved using were those Kiwi crates, or there's lots of different subscription boxes out there, but things like the Kiwi crates where the topic changes every single month. So Maybe one box isn't a huge hit, but another one is. And you suddenly notice that the box where your child built a catapult, suddenly they're really interested. And maybe that means that they'd like to learn more about those studies or build a ballista, or they might want to get into more the history of wars or weapons can go lots of different ways. But those subscription boxes that you can get where it's already curated for you, but there's a different theme every single month or week, just depending on the subscription box, that can really, really help because it saves you the trouble of having to come up with all of the different topics because that can be a little tough. And now one of the things that I also love to do is to take a look at some of the museums, zoos, things in the area and go to some of those special days that they have. So our science museum here has classes and one of them, my kids were determined that they just did not want to learn anything about circuits and electricity. But when I took them to a class and they were around other kids, there was another teacher suddenly they were really interested in snap circuits. So sometimes passions can be ignited in those other areas around other kids in a different situation. So those free or low cost museum or zoo days, especially if they offer any for homeschoolers, but it doesn't have to be necessarily a homeschool thing, but those are a really great way for starting a kid off along a journey when you might not have those things at home. Another thing I like to do is have a random day. So when I go to the library or I choose things for a unit study, I always seem to find a couple of other books that I want to bring home, but they don't fit what we're currently doing. So I always make sure that I leave room for those in a special day that we read a book on something else, something that isn't what we're typically learning about. And we just sit down as a family and we learn about it. It kind of fills in some of those nooks and crannies. The biggest thing I'd like to say, though, about all of these methods is that they don't know what's out there. And neither do we. Have you ever been caught watching someone do something And you feel like, well, I'm 46 now, and I feel like there's still so much that I don't know about, so much that I don't know how to do, so much that there is to discover. So many of us started homeschooling because we love learning. And if we don't know everything that's out there, how could they? So recognize that they really don't know when they're telling you, I don't know what I want to learn. And they're asking you for help. And another thing that we need to remember is, They want to go on a journey with us. This is a perfect opportunity if you leave something and they start asking questions for you to say, I don't know. Should we learn together? Because I never learned this either. Now, one example of something that ended up being an unintentional strewing is when we were doing U.S. history, we were looking at different indigenous cultures and we got into looking at different hoop dances and how they differed among different nations. And this really started off a whole hula hooping adventure. And now we're having a great time learning how to hula hoop. I am still trying to pass a hula hoop behind my back, but my kids are just getting a lot of hilarity out of watching me learn something that's tough for me, something that I don't know how to learn. It makes them realize that it's okay to not know everything and to continue learning. And It helps them get excited about learning new things too. So remember, you're in a journey along with your kids. And the next time they say, 
well, I don't know what I want to learn, recognize that maybe that's true and maybe they need a little help from you. I hope one of these ideas resonated with you today. And I'd be really curious if you'd send me a DM and let me know what are your kids interested in right now? Because one of the things that I love to do is try to collect these ideas and turn them into art projects for the Glitter Bomb, for our members, but also as freebies that we release to everyone. And so I really, really, really love when you share your feedback with us so that I can do that and I can talk about some of those passions in future episodes. Okay, everyone, till next time.